here's a quick review of hierarchical clustering and a look at the algorithm that constructs our clusters for us. So at the top, remember that hierarchical clustering is an unsupervised learning technique that identifies patterns in our data based on the variance of the underlying data and its distribution. The output is going to be various clusters represented by a dendrogram, which is a binary tree showing how our data relates to one another. So we know that our ultimate output is going to be every single data point is a part of some cluster. And that cluster is going to be represented by our dendrogram, which is a binary tree. But how do we get to that stage? I want to unpack the hierarchical clustering algorithm. So here I have plotted five points. This point here is at the point 2, 1. This point is at two, er, 1, 2. This one is at 2, 2. This one is at 3.5, 1.5. This is at 3.5, 2.5, and 0.2 is at 0.2 and 4.5. So here's the distribution of my data. Now, the way that a hierarchical cluster is formed is it measures Euclidean distance between a cluster, or between a scatter plot, to think visually, of our points. The way that it determines if one point is close to another point can be used can be determined by a, a number of p distribution ways based on Euclidean distance, where we can specify some ways of how we use that distance. In class, we talked about using linkage. So here I'm going to demonstrate what linkage would produce for this underlying data. So here I have my data set y. All these points are contained in Y. So if I call linkage on Y, my output of Z, which stores the linkage of Y, is going to be the first value, how close that value, value one is to value two, where value one is denoted in the first column, value two is denoted in the second column, and the distance between those points is denoted in the third column, the Euclidean distance between those points. So here, I've already pre-calculated the distance between points 4 and 5 is 1. The distance between 1 and 3 is also 1. That's because these points lie at 3.5, 1.5, and 3.5, 2.5. Points 1 and 3 lie at 1, 2, and 2, 2. These distances are 1. Next, you'll see that I have introduced here values 6, 7, and 8. So how and what did I get 6, 7, and 8 when I only have 5 data points in my underlying data set? Well, the way that linkage was constructed was it identified that points 1 and 3 belong together. And it identified that points 4 and 5 belong together. And then it considers these linkages as now single points in our data set. And it's going to calculate, our algorithm is going to calculate the distance between these clusters and other points that we would witness. So here I'm going to call this cluster 6 and this one 7. Or that works okay. And then, as we can see, the next closest is going to be followed by such that I have encompassed these points in a cluster, these points in a cluster, these points exist in a cluster, and then there's one giant cluster that contains all of my points. Now, 
how would these values be represented in a dendrogram? Recall that a dendrogram is a binary tree classifier that shows the distance between points on the y-axis and those given points on the x-axis. So here, the distance between 4 and 5, 1. The distance between 1 and 3, 1. The distance between this cluster, which is 6 or 7, and this cluster, which is the other 6 or 7, is roughly just over 2. And lastly, this point 2 is the distance 2.5 away from that cluster. And now, we see a production of our dendrogram based on these clusters, where these clusters were identified via linkages. What's important here is one point was considered to be how close to another point, and then how close those are to yet another point. So in that way, we are iterating through our points to try to create clusters of equal distance between one another. So we created these clusters, a cluster of those guys together, and then the giant macro cluster of all of our points in one, broken down by distance between the values into this dendrogram. Good. Good.